What we heard from Quebec and Ontario is they want to overlay on top of that their own processes. And what kind of precedent are we setting here in, in our country uh, for the transportation of goods and services across Canada? The Premier of Saskatchewan, Brad Wally, isn't too impressed with Ontario and Quebec. Wall says he's concerned about the recent demands the provinces have made in exchange for support of Trans-Canada's Energy East pipeline. The Sun News contributor Kevin Cadet joins us now from Toronto. Uh, Kevin, Brad Wall raises a good point there. We transport goods across the country in various ways all the time. You know, Ontario cars being shipped out west with... Ontario or the car manufacturers don't start paying off Manitoba and Saskatchewan to get a car to Calgary. Yeah, our premiers of uh, Quebec and Ontario seem to forget that as two of the largest recipients of equalization in Canada, the vast majority of the money for which comes from Saskatchewan and Alberta, that they're uh, biting the hand that feeds them by putting up these trade barriers in, in an effort to get important oil to market. All right, they've uh, established seven conditions, Quebec has, and Ontario signing on to these as well. I want to bring those up and show them to the audience. So there you have, conduct environmental assessment on carbon emissions, establish plan and compensation fund in case of a spill, consult near, uh, with nearby communities on impacts of the project, uh, respect standards to assure public safety, protection of the environment, involve and consult with First Nations groups, and generate economic benefits for Quebec. What? and ensure no impact to Quebec's natural gas supply. This is inspired by B.C. Premier Christy Clark, I, I would say, based on what she did uh, to try and get her support for Northern Gateway. Yeah, you clearly have politicians playing politics. Big surprise there. The unfortunate part is the politics here will actually have the potential of having a negative impact on job creation in their own provinces, uh, especially the climate emission uh, uh, item on the, the list of seven items to suggest that somehow climate change should be involved in the National Energy Board's oversight. The chair of the NEB himself has already rejected that it's their responsibility to look at climate change. So you've got Quebec and Ontario playing a peculiar, peculiar game of politics, and there's an important large amount of money in play here, including money and jobs in their own provinces. Uh, I want to play a clip of Brad Wall because I think he's starting to get agitated. Uh, here's another clip of the Premier talking about what you mentioned earlier, the whole equalization thing. Here we have a couple of provinces that are the greatest benefactors from equalization, as it should be. They qualify. It's the formula we all, everyone's basically agreed to. Uh, the equalization uh, money that we have in Canada is provided by a federal government through a program on the basis of a tax base that of recent years has been driven a lot by Western Canadian economies, by our oil. And uh, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised this is a straightforward pipeline project. There should be a rigorous NEB process, National Energy Board process, to, to, uh, to make sure it passes all the environmental muster, all the safety muster. But uh, uh, that should be the only process involved. These two provinces, I think, are, are putting in the way of the project some unnecessary barriers. All right, Kevin, uh, they're not only putting up unnecessary barriers, both provinces so far refusing to develop their own natural resources, but as Brad Wall points out, they're happy to take the equalization money. Do you think that maybe that should be looked at? I think you put your finger on an important point. When you think about Ontario, for example, the, uh, the Northern Ontario has a substantial uh, amount of chromite, uh, steel products that are eligible to be taken out of the, out of the ground, and the Ontario government can't put in place measures to develop it. Uh, it continues to beg the feds to do it for them. And all they do instead is put in place barriers for other provinces to help them in Ontario benefit from their own resources. Alberta and Saskatchewan, uh, their energy market derives an important uh, number of jobs in Ontario, secondary market. Uh, to see them putting up these barriers is, is, is hard to understand unless it's driven solely by one of the items on there which had to do with the price of natural gas natural gas companies down here in, in Ontario and Quebec are, are raising the fear that somehow natural gas prices will rise and that they want somehow to impose their will on a privately owned pipeline and demand that TransCanada build a second pipeline uh, is just ludicrous. All right, it is a bit bizarre and in my view this sort of talk by Premiers Wynne and Cuillard uh, will help drive uh, or reinvigorate the idea of Western separatism because people will just get fed up if these things get in the way. Kevin, great talking to you. We'll chat soon. Thanks, Brian.